morning, Hope Fiends, and welcome to Addiction and Recovery. I'm Tim, and I am an addict, a grateful recovering addict. Today, I'm going to talk about what to expect as a newcomer coming into the rooms, and I am going to touch on the taboo of Suboxone in the rooms. I'm not going to go into depth on it. I'm just going to tell you my experience, because that's all I can tell you is my experience. Okay, so what to expect as a newcomer. First off, I've been in and out of the rooms for 10 years. Um, I've strung together maybe two years of sobriety in that time. And that's not because of the program. That's because of me. I usually, what happened was I would come in on fire. I would get clean. I'd be all about it. I'd hit a, I'd hit a bump in the road. And that bump would, it would usually push me back. And the reason it would push me back into using is because every time I went into the program, I would go in and I would go to meetings and I would sit and I would just spew bullshit. I wouldn't listen to anything. I was looking for anything, any kind of difference between myself and them. And what I should have been doing all along is looking for similarities. Um, but that's what addicts do. We don't want to admit we have a problem. We don't want to admit that we may have been wrong. We, we may not be... But deep down in our hearts, we, we know. We know that we're, we're wrong or else we wouldn't be there in the first place. So number one, if you, if you ended up in the rooms on your own accord, then chances are you know you have a problem. You're just not willing to come to terms with that yet. Now some people are court ordered to NA and AA. That's a totally separate subject. I'll go into that later. Not really a big fan of that myself personally because... We all know that no one can be forced to recover if they don't want to recover. So what do you what to expect? Okay, the first thing you're gonna be that's gonna happen is you're going to be swamped and do not be put off by this. What happens is a newcomer is the most important person in a meeting. And the reason you're the most important person in a meeting is because we need to remind ourselves every day of step one. That is the most important thing to me. I need to remind myself that I am an addict and I have no control over what I do once I put drugs into my body. Once I ingest drugs, there is no telling what will happen. I'm a good chance of ending up in handcuffs, but addiction only leads to three places, jails, institutions, and death. And as corny as that sounds, that is absolutely true. I've been to all three of them places, and none of them were really fun, to be honest with you. Okay, the second thing you're going to be expected is you're going to be shown a lot of love and support and you are going to be totally thrown off by that it is so off-putting at first when you go into the rooms i mean i don't know if if you're like me but when i went in the rooms i was so full of fear and so full of anxiety and self-pity that i couldn't i couldn't grasp i'm like what is wrong with these people why are they paying so much attention to me why do they care even you know and um it was just, it was absurd. I was just so blown away by it. And But then I thought, I sat and thought about it. And I remember the first time I got a hug in NA and I'm like, I was like, oh my God, oh my God. I'm like, you're in my personal space. I don't like this. But, you know, now uh, there is nothing I like more than going in and giving someone a hug. You know why? Because human contact is a base need in life. I mean, that is what it's all about. Human contact, camaraderie, being able to relate to people. We all look for, we all look for reasons to belong. <clears throat> and that's a big thing with uh, drug addicts. We, uh, most of us, I, might, I know myself, I never felt like I belonged anywhere. I've always felt different. I've always been different for some reason. I've always, I got picked on a lot as a child. I mean, um... I've had a lot of bad shit happen to me, but that's neither here nor there. What we're, we're talking about is newcomers. Okay, the second thing, to, so you're going to get swamped. You're going to be the most important person meeting there. Or important, excuse me, you're going to be the most important person at the meeting there, sorry. And you're going to be and you're going to be shown a lot of love and support that you, you're totally off put by. I mean, you might not be, but I totally was at first because I didn't. I didn't know how to love myself. I didn't have a clue. And what the rooms taught me was how to love myself. They loved me while I was incapable of loving myself. And then they taught me to love myself. And in doing that, in loving myself, helps me to love others. I, I really 
I, I never liked myself. I mean, I was never comfortable in my own skin. I couldn't sit in a room by myself for an hour and just in my own thoughts and be okay with that. It was, it was just madness between my ears. It was like a hamster running on a fucking wheel just over and over and over again. Just obsession and just... You know where I'm coming from. Any addict that has... Every addict knows the feeling. The insanity between your ears. <laughs> um, so when you come into the program and you're a newcomer, please, number one, look for similarities. Don't look for differences. You're going to want to look for differences, but I promise you, you are not unique. And if you sit down and, and listen, don't open your mouth, listen. That That's a, actually probably the best advice I could give for your first meeting tell them a little bit about yourself but listen and try to relate to what other people are saying because I damn well guarantee someone in that room is going to say something that you relate to I guarantee it my second bit of advice would be take what you can take and leave the rest behind you got to remember we're all sick varying degrees of sickness but in general we're all sick we're addicts we have a disease we have, once we put a, a drug into our body, we have no control of the outcome. Usually it ends up in ingesting more drugs and more drugs and more drugs. And then sometimes ending up in them pretty chrome bracelets that are really uncomfortable and hurt like hell. So, my, um, what, my, my advice, to, my, I guess the, in a, in a nutshell what I'm saying is just be open-minded honest and willing to listen to the suggestions be honest with yourself and them i mean but when i when 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 we say honesty most people think that means don't lie to them no that means don't lie to yourself number one and the rest will follow if you're honest with yourself and you can be honest with them that's when recovery begins you have to be honest number two you have to be open-minded you have to be willing to step out of your comfort zone, and it's going to be scary as hell. It is terrifying, but don't be terrified. Um, it can't be any worse than what you're living through right now. You're going and you're sitting with a bunch of people that are exactly like you, that have the same problems as you, and the weird, the cool, cool and weird both. It's so super cool that what addiction has done for me has actually brought me into contact and made me friends with people I would have never, ever associated with in a million years. I have friends that are in their 80s. I have younger friends. I have it, all races, all religions. But you know what? We all have the same, the same issue. We're all drug addicts. Addiction doesn't care about your race. It doesn't care about how much money you have. It doesn't care how old you are. The only thing it cares about is fucking tearing you down. That is it. That's that is it. And addiction is a very, very patient and sneaky son of a bitch. Let me tell you, it will it will sneak up on you and grab you by the boo boo before you know what's going on. Now I want to touch on this a little bit. I'm not I, I don't I'm not a I'm not an expert on it. All I can tell you is my experience. Suboxin in the rooms of recovery. <clears throat> now personally I'm on Suboxin myself um, I started out at eight milligrams, a couple, I think like a month and a half, maybe a month and a half after that, I stepped down to four milligrams. Um, a couple months, maybe, maybe a month and a half, another couple months, I stepped down to two milligrams. Well, I'm now down to 0.5 milligrams and I am, I am getting ready to step off. I've heard a lot from people that, um, you know, after you get down to 0.5, really, you're not getting that much um, bioavailability. There's so you're really not getting the drug. I, I don't know if it's a psychological thing or not. Um, so when I do step off, I am going to have some withdrawal. I, I I know this. I've cold turkey thousands of times. Well, I don't know about thousands, but hundreds at least. Um, so I know I can do this. So if I look a little worse for wear, um, you'll you'll know when I step off. You'll know. <laughs> And I'm gonna I'm gonna bring you along on the journey because that's that's what it's all about is networking, meeting other addicts. But what what I wanted to get with it of the Suboxone, and all, the only point I really wanted to make is, is that your program is your program. No one else can work your program for you. 
and no one else can say whether you're clean or not. You are the one that makes that decision. Now, if you're abusing them, absolutely, you're fucking using still. But if you're taking them the way they're prescribed by your physician to avoid shooting dope, then I would say personally, to me, that's clean. There's a huge difference between me going out and banging a bunch of dope and me waking up in the morning, taking my Suboxone, doing my, my daily meditation, doing my readings, you know, the, the stuff I do to set myself for the next 24 hours ahead of, of time. So, um, I don't know if I, if you got anything out of that video, I hope you did. I love you all. I totally mean that. It, I know it sounds corny as hell, but if I can help one addict, then I'm doing what I, I set out to do. Um, I hope to see you Hope Fiends later. If you have any ideas for videos, or if you're having a topic you're struggling with, or something you just want to talk about, or hear about, feel free to leave it in the suggestions below. And please, please, push that subscribe button, and share this video with others, because the more addicts I can reach, the better chance I have of staying clean myself, and maybe someone will hear something that sets off a light bulb in their head, and maybe that'll make the difference, and that's what I'm hoping. I don't want to save the world, I just want to save an addict, that's it. So my hand is reached out to any addict that is willing to grasp it. So please, subscribe, like, and share. I love you guys, and I will see you tomorrow. Bye.